Welcome to the Great Confusion. <laughs> it seems like I should be saying that every week. This is Legend of the Drowned Isles, a homebrew D and D fifth ed campaign. Uh, the second campaign under this under this banner called the Great Confusion. I am the the host, more importantly, the GM and the one responsible for making the world so weird. I'm Mark the Encaffeinated One, but I'm joined happily by my players, starting on my left with Pat. Hi, uh, my name is Pat. I'm playing Silas Marsh, uh, Bardlock. Hi, uh, I am Marie, and I am playing Annie, who is a rogue fighter. Hey, I'm Nax, and I'm playing Medric, half orc cleric. So really, it's Bardlock cultist, rogue fighter princess, and um, and uh, fireball, cleric. fireball cleric. There you go. That's <laughs> man on fire. Uh, and we are in the midst of this strange party. It began as the end of a week-long celebration. Uh, the Baroness uh, uh, Harquin had been uh, miraculously cured of a terrible ailment and finally able to celebrate and had brought in this massive circus, the Circus Maximus, into the uh, town of Eilthwater, wherein there were numerous games and, and amusements and interesting people to meet. At the end of that was a grand celebration, a grand performance celebration, in which uh, Silas won uh, over uh, over circumstances which were tried to uh, to try to make everybody lose, and then finally the grand party, a big uh, big ball, a big uh, costume ball, in which or masquerade in which all the most prominent people of the town were invited uh, to celebrate. Sure, but you have a feeling that business meetings and networking were probably a major part of why most people were there. Medrick, of course, well known as the Phoenix champion in the area for having defended the town against numerous things. Uh, Annie, uh, there in some ways as eye candy for the Reeve, although having her own reasons to be at the party as well. And Silas having decided to sneak into the party to find out what's really going on with the Baron and Baroness. The first part of the party yielded a few surprises. Um, we discovered that you weren't the only one sneaking in and around the party, uh, although having been uh, both, I guess you discovered the nearly dead body of a uh, a dwarf of, of some uh, that you had met before, Jordy, I believe his name is, uh, and also having discovered downstairs at the party, not only that the dancing was pretty intense for a while, but also that there was these strange bags that were attached in a couple of different places around the building. When approached, these bags seemed to self-destruct, creating a sort of strange, awful green mist in the area and leaving behind for a brief instant a fragment of an abyssal rune. Well, time moved on, and it seemed as though something shifted. Everything, in fact, shifted. And the entire Oh, I should say there was one more thing that happened uh, just before that, which was the confrontation of the Baron with this shadowy figure um, whose uh, shape seemed to have large horns. And the shadowy figure called out the Baron in front of everyone, claiming him to be nothing more than a pirate who had stolen everything that he had and betrayed those who were closest to them. And at that point... The shift was uh, underway. The entirety of the mansion seems to have been shifted into another plane of existence, perhaps. And during that shifting, transformed. No longer the beautiful wood and uh, fabric furnishings, but now made of stone and rotting wood. Uh, made of uh, vines and plants overgrown in all kinds of places. The people themselves seem to be transformed as well. Most seeming to merge with some variation, some expression of the masks that they were wearing, although sometimes more interpretive than anything else. Uh, others uh, not only transforming into that, but laughing continuously and helplessly, as if the entire world 
was nothing more than an amusement. Others, however, turned feral, their fingernails elongated, and they found themselves unstoppably uh, attacking others. Although in the, um, in the efforts, there weren't a lot that were truly harmed. Um, also transformed seemed to be the spaces around the main ballroom, disfigured from its original raven em emblem on the bottom, now seems to have some sort of strange octopoid shape, uh, filled with large thorns which hold aloft the body of the Baroness, to, uh, to which mockery is subjected by the woman in yellow lace who you'd met before, who seems to be perhaps the one in charge. Um, in another kind of transformation... Silas found himself not entirely here, somehow locked within a, a parallel shadow of this realm, the equivalent, perhaps, of the ethereal realm to the material, not able to physically interact much, able to communicate thanks to the book and the names within, but still there in spirit, you might say unchanged, for whatever reason, seems to be Medric and Marie. Sorry, I'm not Marie. Well, Marie is also unchanged, but she's a player. <laughs> I, don't have your, I don't have your character names on my screen in front of me, so I have to glance over here to remember. That's Annie. That's Annie who's there and unchanged, um, although the rest seem to be somewhat changed. In one of the locations where you had seen that uh, bag transform into the Abyssal Rune, you found this in, instead, a strange, ape-like, gray, greedy creature that seemed to be both tethered to the rune and somehow uh, enamored of it. But when offered a very shiny thing, in fact, a gem removed from the gem-encrusted face of uh, the transformed version of Ardwin Cartwright, uh, you, uh, you were able to convince it to forego whatever binds it had, and in doing so seemed to have removed some of the stressors upon this strange realm. Uh, now, you find yourselves still in this space, in the center point of the main lobbyway, a massive uh, writhing collection of vines and leaves seems more than just passively moving in a breeze, but actually actively reacting to any interference there might be going on. At the far end, by the doors, there are piles overgrown of massive mushrooms on which another strange creature sits. Um, so, where we begin... I'm trying to remember, and of course this bug is still there, uh, I'm trying to remember if there was a particular motion in the last moments, or if we can reconvene with, the, with all of you kind of sharing your notes, thoughts, and ideas in one central place. Where notes? Separated from the others, because he had gone down to save Varendel. Yeah, and we were getting rid of dude here and had decided to go to the next weird person that didn't align with the costumes which was I believe over here yeah Silas had mentioned and one of the sets to them I just remember that the abyssal talking lady gave Medrick a splitting headache so he wants to be nowhere near her and there is also a bird that we're following and that seems to be sentient and giving us directions and also looking down at us disapprovingly. <laughs> uh, what, what, what I have specifically in my, my notes was Quasit sees what we've done and goes to tell her. And we need to sever the attachments uh, with the spots where there were pouches. Yes, that. Okay. Yeah, although there wasn't one near the door that we ever saw. Not sure what the guy down there is. Um, I will just let you know that you did not find them all. 
like Pokemon, except more disgusting. Gotta find them all. Gotta find them all. I suppose. No. <laughs> that does make me want to introduce some sort of capture mechanism, but no. <laughs> um. I should also say that there were. Oh, there we are. There were. Um, wandering around, mostly lethargic, but could be inspired to action if attacked or disturbed. Uh, large, uh, I'll call them shadow panthers for nothing similar. Right. Uh, large cats that were, um, you're not sure what they were doing there. They don't seem to be entirely um, physical in nature, but most of them seem to have been uh, just simply sleeping and un unconcerned with what's going on. Right. Except for the one that tried to eat Verendel. Well, it was attacked, I believe, because I believe Verendel was... Mm -hmm. Then it tried to eat him. Yeah, well, I remember then by it went tossing poof. a shiny object at one to get it to chase the object and get out of our way. <laughs> right. Um, I apologize for whatever reason. Occasionally, I'm not hearing you, Pat. So if I don't seem to react to what you said, just be aware I'm not ignoring you. I just didn't didn't hear it. So I only catch about half of what you're saying. So uh, because we're very reliant on uh, Silas contacting us first because we can't see him or interact with him. Um, uh, Medric, do you want to go to the next place that we know that there was there was a pouch? Yes. Okay. Which was I forget. I believe library. there was the library and the toilet that we knew for sure. And the yes. the raven seems to be flying uh, very carefully between all of the things that are there. Um, Let's see. Who, where did Medric? I will end follow up? it also very carefully. Ah, so you're both there. Um, you do hear the crowing of this or the the calling of this raven, and as the the shifting of whatever happened with that strange creature subsides, the calling uh, seems to shift and become intelligible. Um. And you start to make out words Word. uh, as it calls out to you. Come, come, we must sever them all. To be free, to be free is the only way. But it may not seem to realize that you understand it as it just continues to move along. Okay. I'll follow it very it's, carefully because there's just a writhing mass of tentacles. And in it's, and it's making a wide arc around that. The tentacles are actually going after it. Um... I have that here, uh, and they'll make a quick check, uh, and actually get caught up in the tentacles as they fly by. Um, and it seems as though the, the bird has been caught and is having the life wrung out of it. No, no, can't be like this. Only Link must. And All the tentacle is going to get sacred flame then. Okay. So roll... Uh, that's a over. that's a save on its part, I believe. Yeah. So uh, DC is a dexterity save. Fifteen. Right. Uh, I have to bring up that monster. I left it out for some reason. Uh. Uh, just while there's a uh, wait now, uh, Mark Silas is going to dash back up towards the hag uh, up to the that area that was barred the woman in yellow area. lace you mean yes uh up to the area that was uh barricade or had a thingy across it okay yep uh, there was a shimmering field which was you could still move through but it was much more energetic and much more difficult yeah and felt uh, actively he, angry at you he will try to move through it, but we can leave that for now. Just he's basically just going to try and move past while it's occupied with the crow, since okay. nobody can see him or touch him or do anything so far. Uh, an eight does not succeed. 
So Nuke. do your damage. It takes, oh, 15. Damn. Nice. Dang. That's almost max damage. Yeah. Um, so this explosion of, of uh, brilliant flame-colored uh, uh, light uh, severs off that, that uh, vine, releasing the, the, the raven. However, you do see multiple vines now start to, uh, start to activate, uh, seeking out whatever it was that just did this. I'll hide back behind the wall. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, go ahead yeah. and make a stealth check. Oops. Well, I don't have the big armor, so... It's true. Stealth check. I have all of uh, zero mod, like zero bonus for stealth, so that's going to be interesting. I am sneaking. Thirteen. All right. They're not terribly perceptive, so. <laughs> Four. <laughs> wow. So they lash out in random directions, happening to catch um, the few people uh, right there: the white swan, the salmon. Uh, the small jewels, and who is that? The peacock. Uh, each of them flinch from the contact, um, but don't seem to be terribly harmed by it, nor does the vine attempt to capture any of them. Uh, and Annie, you just sort of watch this, this uh, almost tentacloid plant uh, reach out in that direction and kind of cover that mass with vines as if trying to see and understand things and then retract them as it seems to have found nothing of interest. Edric lets out a huge, or a, a quiet sigh. Whew, that was close. <laughs> and the, um, uh, I am going to continue to sneak this way. We'll follow in Annie's footsteps because she clearly knows what she's doing. <laughs> I'll have An uh, Annie make a stealth check with advantage. The uh, raven continues its path and kind of stands by the door of the washrooms. Oh, yeah. No problem. It's not very able to see things. It's not disturbed by you. And Medric can make a stealth check with advantage following in Annie's footsteps. 14 is nice. The 3 is not. The 14 is enough. It, it, if it's not actively looking for you, it actually has a hard time noticing things. Um, it did react to the raven, though, actively. Well, the raven was being uh, like obnoxiously loud, so that, that does make sense. Could be, could be. From where you are green, there... Green people are the ones that are laughing, and red ones are the ones that are trying to attack them, right? That's right. Yeah. That's right. And that's the brown quesa that's right beside you. You see the wooden duck kind of uh, picking away at a large mushroom at the other side. You see one of those cats also not far away, seemingly unbothered by things. From where you are, though, you can see that uh, kind of overgrown... Uh, in, or rather the mushrooms have overgrown this entire area uh, and you can see what looks like a, a dark figure wrapped up in these mushrooms, almost as though it's a cloak of mushrooms that's grown up over them. They seem to be moving a little bit, but not much, as if wrapped up in it. They're definitely not laughing, they're not attacking. At the far side, you see sitting on top of a mushroom, luxuriating, uh, is this sort of small blobbish humanoid, uh, graying skin, uh, looks kind of like a mushroom. In fact, you kind of realize that a few mushrooms are actually growing off of their skin um, and kind of uh, uh, taking a chunk of mushroom and consuming it, um, kind of self-satisfied. It, it, it sort of watches over the mushrooms, doesn't seem to notice either one of you at the moment. Uh, but it is seemingly the eyeing that cat that's there. Now, up where you have gone, uh, Silas, you can see um, the reappearance of that that little creature. Um, I'm trying to remember where he's gone to. Uh, well, I think it was up here, wasn't it? I think it's the frog. Uh, well, there's the frog, but there's also... Oh, you mean the uh, the imp. the closet that was helping? Yeah, it is there, even though I can't find it. <laughs> I don't know where it went to. Um, 
kind of giving giving its report to the uh, the woman in yellow. Um, you can see the Baroness is still kind of lifted up by these thorns that are piercing every once in a while, almost as though they're kind of probing on her body and she twists and writhes and lets out a growl, a strange throaty growl that seems far larger than her body should be able to release. And there's a smile that crosses across the yellow laced woman. The smile seems to grow wider than naturally uh, revealing more rows of teeth than you might have expected. Silas will try to push in against the barrier and see if he can get through. Okay. Um, it is considered difficult terrain in this case, so it will be slow moving through. Sure. And you will need to make an athletics check. Uh, oh, sorry. A, mm, let me see here. Yeah, it would be, it'd be athletics, which is strength-based. Okay, dokey. Uh, this is not going to go well. Yeah. Well, when he bounces off of that... Well, you can uh, choose to continue through, and you will make it, but you can feel it shredding at your, your, your essence. Sure, he'll go through. Okay. You take oof, six points of necrotic damage as you move through it. And you feel as though part of your soul was left behind in that door. Oh, jeez. Um, and the yellow lace uh, woman turns around. Her face resumes a sort of normal humanoid form. Uh, and she is quite beautiful, well, well proportioned, uh, very well, good poise. But you've had a glimpse perhaps behind the curtain of what she really looks like. But she does look yeah. at you with some amusement. Yeah, it you're, doesn't matter. She's not falling. That's true. You're very determined. I'll give you that. I am. I am here to accept a negotiation for an offer of assistance. But really? At some point in the future. However, the current time, you have more to worry about, and I think I can help. The little demonoid creature kind of looks looks at you with uh, some con some confusion. It tilts its head as if kind of surprised by this. Um, very little emotion crosses across the yellow face, a yellow laced woman's uh, face. Um, but she does, there's a little quirk in the corner of her mouth as if amused. And what, pray tell, am I facing? And what can you do? What do you really know about what's going on here? I am sure that I don't know everything, but you pulled us into this dimension in an attempt to force the Baroness to join you. In a this dimension is being held here by links to lesser creatures that exist throughout this mansion. Currently, my friends are hunting them down and severing the links. I don't think you have a lot of time to finish what you want to do, and I think I can help in exchange for your assistance in the future. I see. So you would turn so quickly against your allies, then? I'm not turning against them. I wish this place to be ended so that the others in the building can be returned to their home, let the home territory. But I have no love for the Baroness. Everything I've seen suggests that she is no better than you are. You so if flatter it, me. If ending this require, I, if, if ending this and gaining your assistance can be done by 
finishing your job with the Baroness, I believe I may be able to help. Interesting prospect. Most don't come to me with such an offer. My name is Silas Marsh, and I am full of glorious purpose. <laughs> you are burdened with glorious purpose. That's it. <laughs> I, 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 I would like to think that that must, like, giggle is in, in when he says that. <laughs> yeah. Because I'm terrible at it, I will give you inspiration uh, as I remember it for that. Sure. Mostly for the offer, not necessarily for the movie quote. Um, Wishing I could remember where I put my pens when I was moving everything around. Ah, you're there. For want of a pen, an inspiration was lost. With my memory, it's entirely possible. Same. Uh, I tell you what. This spell was always somewhat limited in time. It always had an expiry date, like most mortal lives. But you could admit me of some pests. Two animals in particular. A raven and a toad. Who are they? There's a toad. Does it matter who they are? Yes. Hmm. As I've said, I do not wish harm on the others, but I will help you with the Baroness. And he'll try to move closer to the... Uh, he'll see if he can move through the thorns close enough to touch the Baroness, because some, a lot of stuff doesn't seem to affect him, so he'll give it a try. Okay. I don't remember if he tried it before and failed or not. I don't think he did. He came close. Um, as you move towards the thorns, uh, the thorny, essentially this mass that's there, it is moving and shifting, and it does seem to move and shift in response to you coming closer, pointing mm -hmm. out its two-inch-long thorns that are, are kind of towards you. And you feel... Ever so, oh, so um, um, slightly, as you come close, one of them jabs out and uh, pricks you for one point of, of uh, piercing damage. You also feel the sort of release of a cold poison, which does not seem to affect you. If I may be permitted to touch her, I may have something that can help you. Do you even know what she is? No. And I assume she's not human. Oh, I wouldn't assume something like that. Then I do not care. Mm. Sorry, shouldn't have been human, should have been... <laughs> there should be a word for other than just mortals for the non monstery people. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, I assume, actually, probably just to be more of these, it, it's a, I assume that she is not a mortal like I am. From what I've been able to gather, you're not a mortal like many others yourself. But no, her shell is mortal and human, also frail. And yet, what my sisters have been able to work here is intriguing. She's a creation of your sisters? He just says that automatically, so just his curiosity kicks in. More of a bottle. He says, may I be allowed to touch her? I'm not certain this will work, but I was able to touch one of the shadowy cat creatures earlier. Interesting. 
And she kind of gestures, and you see an opening open up in the wall of thorns. But make this quick. You have, as already said, indicated my time grows shorter. Am I correct that you need her to concede? It would definitely make things easier. Willingness always makes it easier. Well, then I shall try the simplest possibility first. He raises the staff and casts command. Concede. Interesting. Okay. Uh, This isn't the first idea I came up with, but it's the easier one, so we'll try this. (laughs) I will just quickly check on command. Make Uh, sure I remember its parameters. Yeah, so should I. Uh, Command. One word command to a creature you can see within range. Wisdom saving throw or follow the command on its next turn. No effect on undead or if it does not understand your language. Or if the command is directly harmful to it. So that could negate it. Okay. Uh, I will have to look up her stats. I didn't expect a direct confrontation of the Baroness, which is kind of fun. Where are you? Now I'm doing the scrolling game. There we go. Mm-hmm. It's not nearly The only as guarantee of what Silas is going to do is that he will do the unexpected. Okay. This is, you said a wisdom saving throw? Uh, yes. Uh, where's that? Yeah, wisdom saving throw. Okay. For some reason, rule 20 isn't kicking in, but I can do... A manual. Okay. So she rolled with advantage uh, uh, for yeah, reasons. What's, my... what's your DC? Uh, that's what I'm looking for. That's how it's okay. Dang it. Spell save is 15. Okay. So for a moment, um, as the, the body kind of... Uh, did you have to touch her to do that, or was it spoken? No, that was actually range. Okay. Like 60 feet. So as you, as you cast the command, there's sort of a wave of energy, um, which uh, you see, but you're not sure if anyone in the room saw it, um, as it's still kind of crossing the, some sort of ethereal plane. She seems to have noticed, however, and she looks over at you, and for an instant you think it's, it's worked. The simplest thing worked. But then her eyes uh, flash to a sort of, uh, greenish shade, and for an instant, they take on a reptilian cast with a split pupil, pupil in the middle, uh, and then um, it the magic seems to have washed over her. Hmm. We're going to return, as you think, uh, to the others who have been who have been contemplating what to do: follow the raven or investigate what's nearby. What is the conclusion? I'm going to follow the raven. I'm going to tell Medric to follow my lead. And I'm going to go here, disengage, and then uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. I will do the same thing. Disengage where any disengaged. I'm on top of the raven, but just assume like I'm like right next to Annie. Okay. We don't have to go strictly by um, by rounds and things. It's it's or by by time because it's only a few seconds and it's not an active combat. Uh, I just having want to like cover up the uh, raven icon so that we can't move it. <laughs> no, that's fine. That's fine. Um, it's kind of apparently waiting because it doesn't seem to be able to open doors. Okay. Uh, which the door is closed. Um, the, the plant in the middle doesn't seem to react as much to you now, maybe because you aren't actively opposing it or maybe because of reasons, never knew it was me. um, you, you got away with it. You, 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 you punking kids. Yeah. <laughs> um, as you open up that door, uh, let me just see if I make sure which one that is. 
Um, first of all, the raven will fly in as soon as the door is open. Um, and actually, I got to move something. Uh, as you, sorry, I scrolled too far. The scrolling game. It is not the funnest game that I have, <laughs> but yet it's the one that I play most often. <laughs> All right, uh, there we are. Um, as you see the room, uh, it looks as though it has been uh, destroyed. Uh, torn apart, large gouges out of the stone walls and ceiling, um, the the furniture that was in there, the the throne, so to speak, uh, has been has been torn aside. And sitting uh, in in sort of this this pile, um, in in uh, taking its its claws and scraping them along the porcelain, perhaps to to sharpen them. Um, you see a a short, rough-skinned, uh, reddish creature, roughly humanoid, but it has protruding horns, little pointy spines all throughout its body, long fingered claws, um, and you see it once much more like the other one. It has this this thin tether of a sort of chain-like substance. It's not a chain so much as it seems to be woven out of uh, pure magic, uh, which runs down into the rubble itself. Um, both of you can make an insight check just to kind of get a little little momentary uh, feel there. Um, and also it seems to 21. flick out its hand and... Wow, okay. Everybody suddenly is super insightful. That's great. My first good insight check of the game. <laughs> Metric is insightful naturally. So. Um, unlike the other one, which seemed to be content to stay where it was with its pile of things, this one seems to have thrown a tantrum. It seems to have, have just been trying to, to destroy anything within sight. Um, kind of angrily looking for anything to carve out or to destroy. Uh, and in fact, uh, as you enter, uh, the raven flies a little too far, uh, and you see it lash out suddenly, its arm unfolding, and you realize its arms are nearly eight feet long as it slashes towards the raven, who manages to be just outside the range of the slash, but then it moves a little bit further forward, uh, but then sees the rest of you and stops with a, a, a curious expression on his face. Um... You're, you're not the toad. I was expecting the toad. I can smell it. Who's Where the toad? is it? Bring it to me. Toad is um, tasty. Okay, but we haven't seen a toad and in... I'm sorry, who are you? You don't know me. Of course you don't know me. I'm not as... And it kind of straightens its its back up, and it gets its head in, in a slightly uh, different uh, pose. And again, kind of with the insight following, you get this weird sensation of it of it looking like an animal and kind of cowering, or not cowering, kind of kind of hunched down like an animal that's ready to spring. And yet, at the moment, there's this sort of regal pose almost that it strikes. I used to be someone whose name would shake the trees. Mountains would crumble. Lives were sacrificed just so that I would stay away. Ah, it was so glorious. Tasty new souls every day. Ah, but I'm not I'll that. just whisper to Annie. Are you sure we should release this one? I don't think we have much of a choice. They used to be a big shot. Ah, pity. I suppose that's all I can gain from you now. Although, if you were to murder someone for me, I'd feel very, very good about it. Uh, what if we just released you somehow? Then you can do your dirty job yourself. 
Maybe. Would that I could. But you see, my release comes at death. Souls. I need a soul. Then I can break my chain myself. I'll look to the raven. Uh, do you know anything about a toad? And the raven kind of caws a little bit and then kind of swallows and you see the, the, the beak kind of shake from side to side. And you kind of notice that inside this raven's beak, there is now a long slivering, uh, sliver of pink tongue, which has appeared far larger than you might expect from a creature of this size. Oh my this, God, did you eat the toad? This vessel... This vessel will do for now. It seems to be still stretching out this this beak and this body <laughs> to try to to try to speak through it. No, the toad. She is my sister. We have been severed from the connection here. Our servants are not able to do much with this. Uh, block in place. You removed mine. Thank you. I will owe you something for that uh, if I have to. But if you can release my sister, we can move this along. That was a raven speaking, right? Yes. Okay. I know they're hard to tell, Bart, but I'm trying to make a little okay. characterization. Because for some reason I had it in my mind that it's like, what if the raven ate the toad and it was like the toad coming out of its mouth and speaking? <laughs> like, <laughs> not, not to be, you know, confused. That that's what I thought too. Okay. Okay. So, no, that, I'm not crazy. That, that was the raven trying to answer you. <laughs> okay. Um, whereas the other, the other creature kind of seems to be uh, sitting cross-legged, its hands kind of folded in contentment. Almost, again, this weird sort of sense of an almost. Um, uh, benevolent pose, strangely enough, for this creature with these large uh, uh, spine sticking out of it. It's it's uh, ruffled or not ruffled, uh, rumpled red skin, massive horns, uh, almost a beak like face with too many teeth and massive claws. Uh, and yet, it it seems to be almost taking on this this regal or almost uh, monk like appearance. Okay. So How about could... this? We'll see what we can do. And I start to back out of the, uh, for, for that. And I start to back out of the washroom. Don't take too long. I may get hungrier and need two souls. All right, cool. I'll be back later. <laughs> do you uh do you let the raven come out or do you shut the door and well, yes. the raven? I let the raven come out, yes. Okay. okay, it flies over onto the stairs. The price is steep, but it would release my sister, and we would be able to deal with the other our failed sister. Wait, the the price as in like feed your sister the toad to this creature? No. Feed a soul to this creature, so that it will break its bond. Okay, but whose soul? I don't care. Oh, and he is I? not okay with this price? Um, and you hear, sure uh, okay. kind of coming down the hallway just around the area, uh, a sort of thump, 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 as indeed a toad starts to come around the corner uh, and stops. You're not sure at, for what reason, although you do see the, the vines twitching and then th th it kind of r jumping down the hallway and then stopping again as it sees. Uh, uh, yep, as it sees the. Um, Why did I name it that? Oh, I know why. Because there's actually two characters there. <laughs> As it sees Verendel. And I'll just move them down the hallway so you wouldn't have seen him um, before. 
because you would have you would have noticed him. Uh, he was in the hallway, but you can kind of hear this this strange whinnying sound. Uh, it's sort of a, a a it's a beautiful tone uh, in the hallway, but it also sounds a bit like an attack. Uh, and there is a sort of smash and crash going in the hallway near near you. The sound of whatever that thing was is also dissipated. We're stopped. Uh, let's check that out. So as you peek into the hallway, I'm assuming both of you are peeking that way. Yeah. Or at least one of you is. I'll just move Andy a little bit. I I, I accidentally closed Zoom, so I uh -oh. I, I do apologize. I missed I missed part of that. Oh, I, I I looked away for one second, and you've all been moving around. Let me see if I can put you back to where you I were. I do apologize. <laughs> uh, there was a way to do this. There we go. Sorry, uh, what was the last thing you remember? <laughs> um, The toad coming down the hall. Okay. So it stopped at one point, then came around and stopped again. And you hear the, the sound, the musical sound of what is something like a horse's whinny. But it seems to be uh, intent on some sort of charge. And you can hear in the hallway that it is... Uh, there's some someone laughing a little less than a moment ago. And the sound of some sort of attack going on. When you peek around the corner, you see a regal-looking humanoid with a horse's head. And from that horse's head is protruding a large... Uh, silver, it has that iridescent silver kind of uh, uh, look of a horn. And you see a unicorn person attacking a, what looks like some sort of bird person with a massive feather. Um, and Annie, you have that moment of sort of universe shifting reality realization when you realize that's Verendel is a unicorn. And across from him, uh, you believe that's Maximus, this uh, headdress of feathers. He seems to be somewhat unconcerned in some ways, laughing a little bit to himself, more like a chuckling to get this sort of woof, 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 woof thing kind of going on. And behind him, you can see this rather large toad that seems to have stopped and is, and is surveying the situation. I'll whisper to the raven, hey, there's a toad. Good. I do not believe she can speak without with the tether still in place. <sighs> but either of those souls would do fine for that creature in there. Uh, no, 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 no. Um, you do also see sleeping in the hallway another one of those cats. Um, large, kind of taking up the hallway. You think you could kind of sneak by it. It doesn't seem to be like there's ways to step around it. If you stepped on its paw, it probably would eat you, but. I thought the one in that hallway was killed by Varendel. Um, maybe, maybe there was two or there was another one. Maybe there was another one. There is another one further down, which is, which was killed, I believe. Okay. Um, Actually, no, that would be the one that was killed. Sorry, that would be... Yeah. It got a little messed up in the last session, so there you go. It's not dead. Okay. Um, yeah, I'm not willing to sacrifice a soul. Yeah, me either. There's got to be another way to release that creature. Let's just go to the next one for now and... Wait, didn't it say that it would end with his death? What if we just killed him? That too. But you're not looking good and I have a dagger. Yeah, I suppose. I do not think they live as you and I do. The voice coming from the raven is getting clearer and clearer, almost as though the practice trying to stretch the face of this raven is finally working. 
although it, it is weird to see it speak because it clatters its its uh, its beak, but its cheeks start to fill up a little bit as if it's trying to exert more force in different directions. Every time its beak opens up, you're actually starting to see little protrusions, and what you realize are teeth pushing through the as though it is growing a body inside. What about the Shadow Panthers? Do they have souls? I do not know. Maybe. Or what if we somehow locked one into the washroom and uh, let whatever happens happen? The creature was content to try to kill something. Maybe this would work. The Panther could kill it, too. Maybe. Either way, we win. I do not know if they die. Most creatures such as that do not die, they simply descend. Uh, on the way in here, there was a little mushroom creature. Yes? What about that soul? Or does it have a soul? They are craven of souls, but do not possess their own. I do not believe. It depends on where my sister found these allies. From which of the nine hells she brought them forth. Or the abyss, if she's so skilled. I must I'll admit. just uh, give a look to Annie and it's like, I'm not saying anything, but it's like, do we want to be dealing with these people or these animals? <laughs> people, animals? <laughs> As in, what have we gotten ourselves into? <laughs> uh, we're here. Um. If we do not stop her, I fear that she will uncork the bottle. What bottle? It's too difficult for me to explain. But... If she unleashes what we have kept, your home is forfeit. What, what, what have you guys kept? Is it some kind of entity? Or... Oh, yes. Powerful. Name? Ancient. Name? Names are powerful things, too. I will not give you its proper name, but I will name it for you. And GM has to look up the name because he forgot it offhand. And then Medric's going to make a religion check. Or history check. Actually, yeah, religion. History uh, is like let's awful. see. Where did you go? Once it was called Eurozelosak. No, pardon me. Eurozelosak. Euro, says it's hard to say with a beak. How do you spell it? Questions the DM. Um, it's a long one. Uh, y U, Y U, R O Z, E S S, E L L, A C, Euro Zesilac. Yeah, that is a pretty long one. I don't have all my teeth and only half my tongue. Do a religion check. Do I know anything about this entity? Eleven. No. Oh. I mean, there are a lot of entities with long names and you didn't study them all. Okay. Or maybe you did read it and then you went, I, I doesn't sound this anything like the way I would have read it. Fighting. Yeah. <laughs> So nothing from your religious background gives you an indication what this might be. But ancient and powerful were two of the things it was described as. All right. Well, uh, yeah, we don't want that getting released, whatever it is. Uh, Annie, have you ever heard of that? Or? Would I? I don't think so. If you have training in history, I'll allow a roll, but... I mean, I think I do. I mean, I am trained in history, so... You can give it a try anyway. See hey, you. Um, you remember one of the less boring lessons you were given as a child. 
um, it was one of those lessons where you, you, you begged and pleaded for something different. Um, and so your tutor said, well, all right. Um, what do you know of dragons? And they related the tale of some of the primordial dragons that existed here. The stories get somewhat vague and contradictory. Um, some say that the dragons made this place. Some say that the dragons fled this place. Some say that this was the home of the dragons and they were kicked out when the gods came in. But whatever, whatever story is true, um, it is known that there were once ancient dragons who roamed across this land. And there are still a few that do. Um, not too far away from where home is, there is said to be a silver dragon that sits upon a hill contemplating things. An entire temple was built up around that dragon. No one's seen the dragon. Um, but one of the names that was similar to this one, um, sometimes referred to as Resilac, um, is an ancient green dragon that is said to have been sleeping. The world was born, and should it ever wake, the world will come to an end. Ancient green dragon? You mean the dragon? One could call it that, but it's so much more. It is power incarnate. And we hold it. Yeah, so we really don't want that to get loose then. No. Um. Are there any souls of evil people in here that we could give to uh, <laughs> Buddy in the washroom. Uh. Mortal, so squeamish. I'd do it myself if I had all my powers, but this feeble link limits me so much. She was very clever to put us here, beyond where I can reach easily. Where were you from originally? No, oh, I will not tell you where I am from. For you might decide some day to see me on less even terms. Let us just say that I am nearer than you might suspect. What's your name? <laughs> You are a bold one asking for all the names. Fine, I will give you one, and may it haunt you. And I gotta look up the name. I am Mother Blood Tallow. Did you know that bones are such sweet things when roasted? Mother Blood what? Blood Tallow. All right. Hmm. And your name? It's only fair. Midrick. Your real name is close. And the, the, the raven seems to contemplate you and kind of tilt its head. Uh, and do I have that here? No, I'll just make the roll. Is it going to be fooled as easily as a tax collector? Ah, uh, no. It, it seems to, to, uh, to nod its head. So uh, it will be. Although your friends call you Medric, it would seem. Oh, yeah, that, that's what I said. I just got a bit of dust in my throat because of all this shifting. Stuff. <laughs> and there's like Medric awkwardly explaining that he got like, or he's trying to casually like recover socially. 
There's a, a loud grunting as uh, the battle continues in the hallway. And, Annie, you see the unicorn, what was it called? Verandelicorn? Uh, lower its head and jab its horn through uh, Maximus, who only briefly stops laughing, but does seem to be wheezing a bit more as he does so. Uh-oh. Uh, hold that thought. Maybe there will go. be a so closer than we thought. If you were to release the bonds of the others, this whole place would give way. And maybe then I can restore my sister. Or find something else at once. But do so quickly. Before she releases. I'll just go uh, see if I can interfere with the uh, battle going in the hallway. <laughs> okay. Uh, actually, do... before I do that, I'll ask uh, the Raven. Uh, if somebody dies here, do they die in the other world? Death is death. Some Maybe deaths are worse than others. Just, like wake up and they're bad. It's like, oh, what a nightmare. Oh, this is no dream. Your dreams will be far worse. Lovely. Anyway, I'll be right back. <laughs> and I'll go, oh, God, this is such a dumb move with such low HP, but... I'll try to drag Maximus away from Verindel. Okay, well, Maximus is on the other side of this hallway. You'd have to go all the oh, way around. Because right. it says Max. Um, okay, got it. Yeah. And I will move the uh, the toad who seems to be... Well, I'll move the eye. Grab the toad. And so you go all the way around. Toad. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> he gives an indignant croak. Um, okay. Uh, make a grab attack. Which would be... Is that just like a, a strength a, modifier a, a, or...? Athletics or acrobatics, whichever is more appropriate for you. Athletics, because it's a lot more appropriate. 19. Okay, yeah, easily enough. Maximus is not that strong, even in this form. It is a little bit difficult because he continues to sort of laugh and guffaw, although you can see this this uh, wound starting to redden across his chest. Does he look okay? Or, I mean, is he going to survive? I mean... Who knows? He's half composed of a of a bird now, and feathers are flowing all over him. He's laughing uproariously, only momentarily stifled by the 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 wound. But where are you going to drag him to, and how quickly? I'm just going to quickly drag him to here, so Verindel can't see him, and also so he can't see me anymore. Because I'm assuming if his uh, current target is no longer available, I'm the next one. Okay, like, yeah. well, <laughs> come on over right now. Well, I mean, gotta go. <laughs> You, I'll give you this for free. He's looking right at you. Durandale? <laughs> yeah, it's the kind of thing where you can't hide if someone's watching you. Um, you remember Annie saying something briefly about that once, where it's like, no wonder you can't hide, you keep standing out front. <laughs> Probably. But so, I'm just hoping that like once he can't see us, he'll just forget about us, maybe. Okay. Like, I don't know what his state, is, what his state of mind is. But either way, Maximus is... Okay, so you drag Max, Maximus around the corner. More, yeah. And He's going to be a lot more safe there than, than where he was. Verandel follows, because you're right there in front of him. And Annie, you see Verandel kind of stomping on down the hallway. Um, very non-thinkingly, but also um, doggedly pursuing the target. I'm going to, this is so stupid, I'm going to pop around the corner and uh, say his first name. It starts with an O. My name okay. is blanking. Oleon? Oleon is exactly right. Uh, so you're going to try to catch his attention? Yep. In what sense? What What is the tone of what you say? Is it a command? Is it friendly? Is it concerned? It's concerned. Okay. Concerned and pressing. All right. You step mom out of the voice. Mom voice. Is it mom? Uh, is it mom yeah, voice? Only on, uh, on the edge of mom voice. Okay. All right. Um, make a persuasion roll. I'll give you advantage because only or only knows you well. I don't think I've ever actually called him by his first name. Nope. First, middle, <laughs> and last name. Only on, no. 
get here right now. <laughs> okay. Luckily. Just be glad he's not a a a a, a, a gnome because they usually have six or eight names. Sixteen. Sixteen. Okay. That's a low roll. For, especially for a plus ten, that's a particularly low roll. Oh. You see him pause. Uh, and he looks back, and the the sort of weird swish of the head, which it isn't like uh, uh, you know a a a normal horse headed person. I don't know if that makes any sense, mm-hmm. uh, because the neck is the neck is elongated as well. It's it's an awkward amalgamation. It's not like a true transformation, but it mm-hmm. kind of swings around and regards you, and the eyes are focused on you now. Um. But the the expression of the horse head is hard to read. Mm-hmm. Um, but you've definitely gotten his attention as he starts to stalk towards you. His head starting to lower. Yep. Uh, once he hits around here, I'm going to uh, start to run this way. <laughs> okay, so you're giving chase? Yep. All right. Um, he picks up his pace behind you. Uh, you... my, my goal, uh, I'll give you my goal, like, trajectory is, uh, one is going to be, um, to get to here. That, that is my goal trajectory. Holy moly. Okay. All Around right. the plant by them being the most entertaining thing to chase. Okay. Um, as you step into the room, you see the the uh, vines of the plant shiver as though it has noticed something. I will have both you and Varendel making dexterity saving throws. Uh, and I have to do his manually. Shoot. You know what's really annoying? When you type habitually with all fingers and you have one finger you can't type with and you do it anyway, oh, no. it's really kind of annoying. Um, okay. Um, both of you fail. Ow. <laughs> and you do not make it all the way you wanted to. In fact, uh, you make it to about the other side of the room. Varendel makes it very briefly inside the room before both of you find yourselves uh, wrapped up with vines and being pulled in towards the central, uh, the central uh, plant, which you can now see is kind of splitting open. It looks like a, a, a flower, but the flower splits in two to reveal kind of a collection of, uh, of little um, sort of little nodules that seem to be spitting and filling up a, a, a basin in the middle with some... Uh, some uh, uh, liquid of some kind. It's letting off a little bit of a smell and gas uh, as it has a hold of you. Uh, you will mm-hmm. take no damage right away as it's looking to grab it, uh, grab at you. Give me two seconds. I am. Um, it's been a month. <laughs> okay. No. And I don't. I keep forgetting what you guys have, so I don't know if there's something that allows you to not be caught, or not be grabbed. Yeah, that, that, that's what I'm checking. Okay. Varendel definitely doesn't um, have that. Yeah. Uh, Medric had cast freedom of movement on himself and Silas, and I think Annie. I'm not absolutely certain about Annie, though. And it lasts an hour. Let me see when I cast it. It might have been in my notes. Yeah, it wouldn't yeah, have been yeah. an hour from now, or it's still within time, if that's if that's the case. Yeah, it was it was uh, back when she was trying to get through the plant. Yeah, I, I think so because it was right when we were were over here. Yep, that would still be active then. So, yeah, Annie, so he... Annie, you are not in fact ca- caught, uh, as it seems to try to to wrap around you, and there's a force that prevents it from from coming in contact with you. Varendo all over is caught. Yep. Um, I instead am going to come on the this side of Varendale and try to cut the plant with vice. Okay. 
the plant has taken damage. It has taken damage. When you draw forth vice, mm-hmm. there is a look that crosses on Varendel's uh, horse-like eyes of recognition. And you get advantage on the roll as he maneuvers to try to make it easier for you to attack. Good. That's a hit. Okay. Uh, okay. Whoa. <laughs> so that, that that's total. So five piercing uh, and one force. And then I'm not below half HP, but... Would there be sneak attack damage? Um, remind me of what conditions. There's an ally within five feet of it just helping you, so yes. Yes. Actually, you yeah. had advantage on the roll as well, so. Oh, yeah. That, so, yes. So, uh, 16, so it looks like? 16. Yep. Okay. Uh, yeah, you easily slash across the vine, which is holding him, and it retreats back in uh, kind of protectively. Um as a creature. In fact, you almost see that it continues to grow and kind of expand outward, uh, almost as though it is pulling itself into this realm deeper and deeper. Uh, but it has released Varendel for the moment. Cool, cool, cool. Uh, I'm going to kind of grab his wrist and pull back. Okay. He comes willingly, um, kind of both getting away from the creature. But again, that sense of familiarity... Um, and where are you pulling him to? Deeper into the room where the... Yeah, just just like pulling him back one. Okay. You do remember that this thing has been able to lash out for about 15 to 20 feet from its central point, so... Yep. Um, I'm just trying to find a safe place to put him. <laughs> Is he actually going to stay, though? <laughs> Basically. Um... This is just, uh, this is just a vestibule, right? Um, it looks as though it has been locked and covered over, and it does okay. not appear to be anything on the other side. Like you can't see through the cracks that are there. Okay. Mm, I'm just trying to find a safe place to put him. Basically, because <laughs> there were other people in this room, correct? Um. Yes. Well, depending on which room you're talking about, but yes, generally there is. Um, you feel yeah. a tug from the hand which is holding onto his, uh, mm-hmm. and he pulls you to face him. Um, mm-hmm. it, sort of face him. I mean, the, yeah. the, the head of the horse is standing another foot or and a half above you, um, but there is that look of recognition, and he looks down at Vice, and he hold, hand, holds out a hand as if to ask for it. I'm not going to be giving him vice. There's a sort of whinny of frustration and a look in the eyes. You can make an insight check to try to understand what this horseman is trying to tell you. Insight, where's my insight? I am going to use my inspiration. Okay. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Fucking curse dice. You're you're looking into the eyes of uh of your date for the evening, your boss, the person you've worked with, the person you feel like you've been getting closer to. And the large uh uh equine eyes don't seem to transmit the emotion or the understanding that you're hoping. Um, There is a small amount of moisture around them. Is it, is it, is it crying? Is that what this is all about? Is it some sort of sad thing? Is it what? And um, the frustration boils over in, in the creature and he throws down your hand um, and turns. But unlike a moment ago, 
where he seemed to be an animal that was acting out of anger. Something seems calmer in this moment. Something seems resigned. And he turns and walks away. Actually, kind of kind of runs, almost gallops. It's a little bit weird. You get the sense that for a moment he's trying to figure out whether there are four legs or two. It's a little mm-hmm. awkward. Um, but he kind of runs across and into the other hallway. I'll follow him. Let's see. Um, where is he going to go? Probably going to continue along and then take a, a sharp right turn down this little alleyway. The trees are there, the bushes that you managed to evade before. He just charges on through them. You can see there's lacerations across his his uh, face uh, and his, his clothing is torn. But nonetheless, he seems determined and smashes into the doorway as if to try to, to, uh, to release it. Um, kind of a, a, a weird moment of frustration, almost turning less of a unicorn into a bull. Uh, the door kind of cracks and smashes and opens wide. But it is not the outside of the mansion that you see from there. And in fact, the unicorn, varincorn thing um, stops as well in confusion as what you see outside is nothing but void. There is nothing in the form. It is not like looking into stars or into water. There is nothing. And tentatively, he reaches out towards it and then jerks his hand back. And you can kind of see where the tips of his fingers that are touched outside are blackened and uh, uh, almost a uh, little ashen almost. Um, and he looks confused, but looks down at you with trust. At this moment, you realize that yeah, he, he has his brain. Some element of it. It's clearly not all there, but whatever curse or manipulation or transformation he had been under, its effect has been weakened by his connection to you and possibly vice. It's not fully himself, but you have him as an ally. I'm just trying to think because I I'm going to flat out say I am completely unarmed if I don't have vice. There's a sort of sad major nod of this massive head. Um, that is the only reason I'm not giving it to you is that I need to de- be able to defend myself as well. <laughs> and he kind of declines, uh, declines his head a little bit and just sort of taps the horn. Yep. Uh, so I'm going to go back to Medric. Before I you think- turn away, he reaches out with a hand gently on your shoulder. Um, and in a, in a weird gesture that you feel like he's trying to communicate, he just puts his hand over his heart and then hands, hence the, puts the hand out straight and opens his hand towards you in a gesture. I'll take his hand. And he'll move with you. In fact, why don't I make uh, the Verendel character... Controllable by you. Oh. oh. So you can, you can move him around as you need to. Okay. Now, why don't we slip back after all this excitement to what's happening with Silas and the next one or two things that he is going to try to, uh, to affect. Okay. Now, when the command spell went off, did it feel like it was starting to affect her or just wasn't going to happen at all? Like, did she resist it or was it just, nah? 
Um, there seemed to be a moment when the magic was trying to work, but it was easily thrown off. Okay. Okay. Well, then he's going to try for... Uh, yeah. Um... He's going to cast Bestow Curse on her. Now, would you allow me to use the inspiration points to give her disadvantage since I don't have a role in this one? Um, it's not usually used to, to invoke disadvantage. There's specific powers no. that can do that. Um... So I don't think it would be a disadvantage on her. Okay. Um, uh, what kind of curse are you trying to create? Well, it's going to be... Uh, because I'm not sure exactly what uh, Yellow Lace Lady is doing... Uh, there's one under their choose an ability score while cursed. They've got disadvantage on ability checks and saving throws. Um, now there is the also possibility that I can come up with an alternate curse with your permission. That would be no more effective. What I'm wanting is basically one that will curse her to have disadvantage on saving throws against uh, yellow lace lady. Hmm. Okay. So basically more susceptible to her works. Mm-hmm. Get rid of the advantage that she's got. Okay. Um, you can certainly try that. Okay. Hmm. Actually, do I know which stat would like likely be the one she's saving with would it be with a wisdom or charisma i mean it really depends upon what's being done to her as well um most of the things which are involving convincing are, are charisma based if they're involving deception is wisdom based so is the yellow lace person trying to lie to her or confuse her or trying to convince her well that's why he'll ask Yellow Lace Lady, he says, how are you trying to force her to your side? Are you convincing? Are you using magic to override her mind? What is your method? It begins with pain. I find that's a good underlying... Uh, method of con of converting most people to your s your point of view, but I do not need to lie to her. Hmm. I'm going to try to give her disadvantage on wisdom saves. Okay. Um. So she gets a wisdom save against this, or she's cursed for concentration up to ten minutes. Okay. Is there any particular visual effect that this, this curse has? Um, I'd say that he basically is sort of staring into her eyes, uh, casting, uh, casting this spell, and his eyes kind of have a dark, watery look uh, comes over them. Uh, as he basically tries to, uh, his voice tries to worm his way into her ears. Okay. Let's see here. And he's holding the rabbit's foot just in case. <laughs> okay. Uh, let's see. And what kind of, it's a wisdom save to start with? Yep, wisdom save against 15. going to pull up that. I don't know why I didn't bring that up before. There we go. 
since I do actually have her made up as a character. All right. And... Oh, that's right. <laughs> roll 20 was not allowing me to... Or, um... Beyond 20 was not allowing me to roll it. Woohoo! That is not oh. beating a fifteen. That is not. Um, you see now the the eyes go that that uh, that um, green color, and once more the split pu pupils come forth. This time they do not dissipate, however, and it looks straight at you. The gaze that you are under feels heavy and waiting and. Um, much more intense than you might have expected. But you have her attention. I am so used to that at this point. Um, well, uh, yeah, now that she has disadvantage uh, for as long as I can concentrate, um, Yeah, I just gotta okay, check off that. Um, he's going to look back from actually no, he won't break the eye contact. He's just gonna cast command again. He's gonna say he's gonna yell out louder, concede. Now that she only gets a normal saving throw against it, hopefully. <laughs> Uh, okay. Concede. Silas is rapidly going through his remaining resources. As you see, the spell seem to take hold. The body goes limp, no longer struggling against the, the thorns. The thorns do not stop pricking and prodding the body, however. Um, little pinpricks of blood are, are appearing in multiple places across the body. But she no longer seems to uh, be resisting it. Good. You make quite an excellent servant. Then with I a gesture. Make, oh, yeah, go ahead, go I ahead. make a good ally. I serve only one. Ah, we will speak more of that later. Yeah. And he backs up a bit, and while she's focused on whatever it does with the next command thing or whatever... Um, he's going to write, in, he's going to pull out his book and make notes, and he's writing to the others. Uh, so, how's it going? Uh, I've got her distracted. What's up with you? And that'll be it. Okay. Why don't we to say to sacrifice that... a soul or not to sacrifice a soul? <laughs> <laughs> well, if he wants to sacrifice a soul, I know a guy. He's in the washroom. <laughs> <laughs> right, was that a response to Silas? That, that was the response to Silas. Was we're currently at do we sacrifice a soul or do we not sacrifice a soul? Wait. So what I what I was saying. How are you? How are you guys the creepy ones? <laughs> Uh, we just met some interesting and possibly evil and terrible creatures, but they might be on our side. I don't even know what's going on anymore. Also, at the how does how are you guys the creepy ones? Is also I kind of woke up Varendale. So you kind of what? Woke up Varendale. <laughs> can, can I hear that message from Annie? No. No. Nope. Nope. Okay. Uh, I'm also coming around the corner. <laughs> okay. Well, holding his hand. <laughs> yeah, he seems a lot more calm than a moment ago. Um, you also notice the the uh, raven um, fly around the corner beyond where you are, which sends another fit of laughing into Maximus. But the raven is speaking to the toad. I fear a shift has happened. We may be too late. All may be lost. All of our plans. And the toad just simply replies, Roar, 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 roar. Not able to speak. Hey, uh, could, could you speak in common? I mean, the raven can do it, so clearly, like, it, it must not be that much effort, right? Her bounds are still in place, 
a soul must be sacrificed to remove them. I thought you understood you that. You removed mine when you tricked that other one into accepting that bauble. Right. So your bonds are what debtors this place to... What's it again? There are other things bound here too, not just us. Things restricted from action and movement. More than just these others who are simpletons bound by their projections. And to remove her bonds, we need a soul? You need that one to move away, to for forget his duties, and simply leave. Break his own chain. So a motivational speech could possibly do it? Flame <laughs> strike, maybe? Who knows? These creatures do not do anything for nothing. They can be cajoled sometimes, or commanded others. Threatened sometimes, yes. Unless they have a bigger threat behind them. You mortals so, know so little about these creatures. Ah, would that I had my full faculty, my full body. She was quite clever. And there's a, 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 a sort of a green croak that comes from the large toad. Gotcha. Uh, now I'll, like, make a motion towards the toad, even though I do not get what it said. <laughs> I'll go back to the washroom. Is any following me? <laughs> Maybe we can, like, negotiate for this thing to go away. Okay. I'm going to tell Varendale to wait here. It seems awfully close to the vines, but... <laughs> Varendale, it does look a little warily towards the vine, but they don't seem to react. Yep. Uh, you open up the door once more, and if it were possible, the room is even more scarred up, as if the creature has been recently once more taking out its frustrations on it. But as you find it, it sits somewhat strangely serenely on this pile of rubble. So, you've brought me something, yes? Oh, I couldn't find any souls except for my own, I'm sorry, but you can't have mine. Yours uh, is, is acceptable. Else we... Well, no, because I need mine too. But uh, is there anything else we could do to remove the bond there? Ah, mortals. Souls are the easiest way to regain my reputation. Okay, what's the second easiest way? Great deeds, but I can do none from here. Something to devour. Or someone else's fealty, I suppose, would do. Someone else's what? Question to the DM. Fealty. What does that mean? Um, <laughs> basically, if someone swore an oath to him or gave okay. them uh, uh, gave them their uh, their loyalty. Okay, okay, come. It was, yeah, all right, I, I can think of the French word now. Okay. Yeah, that's true. That helps. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> okay. Uh, and is Annie here listening to this? Yeah, I'm right behind you. Okay. I'm right here. Right here. Um, Do you know of anybody who could... Uh, is this like a lifetime of fealty? Or? I would prefer it to be a lifetime. But, but it doesn't have to be. Uh, I can use up a servant and discard them, yes. It would help my stature. You can both and make an insight check as you listen to this creature speak. A servant to do what? Anything I wish. Oh shit, my insight is... I am insightful, 23. Oof. I forgot I had plus 9 insight instead of plus 5. Ooh. Um, any... Was it the lady in yellow that, that put you here? She is whom I serve, yes. For now. Um, if, how would you be able to unserve her? If I were to grow in power, of course. And with that, um, Medric, and with your insight, while yes, it initially asked for a soul, everything it's asked for is a way that it can improve its standing. 
it complained when you first met it about having lost its glorious standing that it once had, its power, its reputation, all of that was gone. Um, and the soul or a soul is a powerful metaphysical, 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 um, element. It represents a, 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 a mind, a thought, a, a, a spirit. And when consumed or bound certain creatures, they elevate their strength. So while it asks for a soul, maybe something else that might elevate its strength would be sufficient. Um, and with what it just said, it's bound here because its power does not allow it to become unbound. But if it gets more powerful, it can break its own bond. Okay. I'll let Annie know. So it just, I think it just wants to become more powerful. So if there's ways to make it more powerful without feeding it somebody's soul, then it'll be free. No ways to get it more powerful. Are you hungry or anything? Or I could eat. Can I give it a motivational speech? I give it a <laughs> you know, you want to elev- you want to become elevated and become stronger than you already are. Like you're never going to be strong just smacking, just breaking shit in a washroom. What about I mean, foiling her plans to free yourself? Which begins by leaving this room. You can do it. We're holding the door open for you. If I could do that, I would. And it kind of shakes its head at the perhaps not the most uh, uh, clever of solutions. I am bound here by service and by deed. My power limits what I can do. I know this, and so does she. But if my power were to grow... I know how good my power is, but it's meaningless. It is not in me that the power must only grow, but in others' eyes, too. Well, I think you're a really powerful dude. Thanks. But you don't matter here. Well, I matter right now. Once I leave, I won't matter, but... This is not your realm... This is not your fabric to play with. Uh, I know. It is we ours. It and... We created it. We hold it here. This place is bound by our power, our magic. That must shift. Yeah, but we need to leave, and we can't leave so long as you're chained to the washroom. Then get me something that makes my power grow. Okay, what do you want? We can try to get you some food. Uh, mortal Souls substances. Question. I don't want... Mortal substances do not matter to me. Power, magic, reputation. Magic. Hmm. Do you know of any magical bubbles lying about by any chance? Not within the range that I can see or do anything. Was there anything in the pile that the dude in the other room had? Wait, is the raven next to us? Would you know? The raven's still out talking to the toad. It's a very one-sided okay. conversation. Mostly the raven talking and the toad okay. giving affirmative or non-affirmative. <laughs> um, the pile of of bottle, uh, bobbles uh, disappeared with that creature. Okay. It took its, it took its treasure and went home. What about Mushroom Guy? You might know something. You haven't looked very closely at him, so we've kind of seen him at a distance and went, nope. So you don't really know much about him. I was mainly like just saying this to like myself and Andy or anybody with it. Yeah. That would be... Hmm? That would probably be the next best thing would be to go to one of the others. So if we can get him magic items. Anyway, uh, what's your name, bud? I'll ask the creature. <laughs> uh, it smiles. Do you know what a name is? A name is the first step to a relationship. I am Drobfree. 
and that's D R O B F R I. Okay, F R I. And what would your name be? Uh, if I tell you my name, we're not in a relationship, though, are we? Of course we are. Like kind of a coworkers temporary, like. If that makes you feel better. All right, I'm Medrick. Anyway, do free. We'll be right back. We'll get you out of here, and at the same time, we'll get ourselves out of here. I wait with infinite patience, but be fast. Gotcha. Okay. That was weird. I, I say this like outside of the washroom. <laughs> hey, where's uh? What's your face, Raven? Around the corner, again. Mother Blood Tallow. Can you call out the name? No. It was just oh, like... Okay. I'll just peek Wait. my head into the hallway and like motion her to come along. Oh, look. It think, it's still thinking. And she turns away from the toad and flies down towards you. Well, <sighs> have you found something to sacrifice to that one in there or something else? No, but it seems to just want to grow in power or grow in standing. So if we can make it more powerful and more important by other means... It, it, it did suggest magic items. Ah. And I noticed uh, there, was, there was this little mushroom guy down in the corner. What about that one? Or does it have any magic items? Or Would freeing one of the other ones free your sister? Or does it specifically have to be that one? I haven't been able to understand the magic too well, unfortunately. And these ravens I see well in the dark, but this is far more than dark here. Everything is shades of gray. Everything is complicated by what Cryptwallow has done, but... Cryptwallow? That's what she said. But I believe the binding is specific. A side effect of what she's done, clever sister, but still specific. What the others Crip are bound Waller. to, I do not know. Is Cryptwallow the lady in yellow? That speaks migraines. Uh, that is one migraines. face. That is one face that she wears. She has many, of course. I like that. <laughs> <laughs> A lady who speaks migraines. Yes. All right. Yeah, let's go. Uh, maybe that dude sitting on the mushrooms knows something. Or maybe there's something in the library we can... Hey, knowledge is power, right? Or somebody said that once. I remember. What if we give... We can uh, search the library. We can just bring a bunch of books to Drub Free and he'll become more powerful. I don't think that's what he might. Well, it's a shot. Maybe there's a magical spellbook or something in there that's not world-endingly dangerous. Okay, so you step in through the library doors. I open it very carefully to not disturb anything that may or may not be there. Uh, I don't know if there's still... Is there still a door there? No, okay, the door's been removed. Um, so in there you see... Oh, too many windows again. <laughs> There we go. Um, you see a site which um, may shake you a little bit. Uh, a 10 to 11 foot tall branching tree um, with a, a feminine body on two legs. As this tree from multiple branches has... Um, uh, acorns uh, that are used as a cat of nine tails. As you realize the great tree, the autumn tree that Melora was dressed as comes rushing towards you intent on thrashing you with its branches of nine tails. I shut the door. And you also, <laughs> before I would catch a couple of other things before you do, 
Um, <laughs> you do notice you do notice another one of those sleeping uh, panthers in the corner. You also notice in the far corner, which you do remember was one of the places you had found another one of those bags, um, is a what looks like a child. Um, dressed in in rags, um, with larger than normal eyes looking up sadly at you in the corner, and kind of sitting on the table, and you can see another chain wrapped around its feet, uh, linking to underneath the table. But then you shut the door, and you hear thump as the massive tree uh, smacks against the 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 door and you can actually see the door kind of shake a little bit and then thump 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 what's the cat doing among all this chaos it wasn't it was sleeping when it was there before you don't know it's not sleeping now though (laughs) i mean the door is closed so you're not really sure there is a pause however in the thwomping i'll whisper out loud malora because i don't know if annie would have noticed it's malora but I mean, you did kind of go open the door, close the door. So there wasn't really a lot of time to, to observe anything. Oh, I heard, saw, saw it was you open the door. It's not a wide hallway. It's true. Um, Melora seems to be uh, okay. at everything. If there is a way we could... I wonder if she's still on the other side of the door right now. Because if we can just like gently open the door and leave so that she can exit the room without seeing us, then we can come back and see what that weird child is in the corner and maybe let it go. We wouldn't want her to get injured either. Yeah, exactly. There's a loud thumping and then a, a, a yowling of a very angry cat-like being. Meow. Uh, <laughs> Little, little deeper throated than that, but that's the essence of it. Yes. And she's woken up the cat. Well, that's going to be a good distraction for us then. And I'm pretty sure, like that cat, that cat is done. It's not like it's a real cat anyway. Ooh, this page is full. I gotta grab a new one. <laughs> um. Do we hear the sounds of battle on the other side of the door? <laughs> uh, you can listen at the door. The walls and the doors are pretty thick in this building. So um, you heard the cat. Actually, yeah, you did hear the cat. So you would hear uh, some sort of pitched battle just on the other side of the door. Um, every once in a while, there's a, a thump on the on the wall itself as though something or someone or something uh, or some things were smashed up against the door or against the wall. But it doesn't seem to be. It's hard to tell exactly what the action is going on just on the other side. So let's just leave. Oh, I'll open the door just slightly and then tell everybody to like move to move down the hallway. Well, um, it is a double door. The one on the, 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 the lower door is the one you opened before and you open it and it only opens slightly and hits something very heavy on the other side. The door kind of okay, gets right. shoved a little bit as the tree that's standing on the other side of the door whomps down at the cat, which is uh, facing off against it. Unfortunately, they're standing right in front of the doors. Okay, but if the door is just slightly ajar, that's good enough, because then she might leave the room afterwards after she's done with the cat. Well, it opens inward, and it only opened a couple of inches. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. She can open it the rest of the way when she's done with the cat. (laughs) All right. The sounds of battle are much more fierce. Um, You do hear the sound of the raking of some sort of of trees. You do hear the snap of some sort of uh, wooden limb. Um and you kind of see from the little vantage point that the cat has a trunk uh, or a chunk of tree, a branch in its teeth and kind of shaking it back and forth and pushing it aside as it's fallen off or been broken off rather of the creature. Remember when we saw the cat fighting them before it was tearing them to pieces. Yeah. This is probably not a good idea. Verendel was different. Most of the people I don't think can stand up to them. Yeah, in fact, one of them was tearing somebody to shreds there, and you had to step in. All right. Uh, I just figured, like, the eight-foot-tall tree ant would be able to, like, 
smack Maybe. the cat. <laughs> I mean, the, 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 like the, cat's the cat's not showing the cat's not showing signs of having been hit, but okay. you do know that the weapon, if it is indeed this sort of cat of nine tails made out of out of acorns on green branches, there wouldn't be any sign. It's all blunt damage. There's no there's no breaking of the skin. Mm-hmm. Although right. Strange shadowy panthers, do they even have blood? You're not really sure. Um, but as you're watching, you do see a, a large branch come smashing down on the on the top of its head. It does seem dazed for a second or two, if not knocked to its feet, knocked to the floor. All right, well, let's... never mind plan B, let, let's step in. And I'll kick the door in. Okay, that's going to be oh. a uh, strength check. Wait, wait, it's a cat that's behind the door, right? Not anymore. Uh, there, there's two doors. The tree is behind one of them. The cat's behind the other. So you can kick All right, the door. All right, I'll kick the, cat. the door with the cat. Okay. Um, still a strength right. check because it's still a heavy thing, but not, ah, as, heavy, not as heavy as a tree. Ah. Eleven. Uh, I... <laughs> so, yeah, king thunk. It kind of goes open a little bit. The cat. Uh, it stops where the cat is, but the cat leaps backward out of the way, uh, sensing another danger. Do I have cl- a clear line of sight between me and the cat? Uh, at this point, yes. And the door, in fact, can swing open easily. Sacred flame! Okay. It needs save 15. It does. Let's see here. Dexterity saving throw. Oh, uh, was that an advantage? Or uh, no, it's 15. Damn it. You, you tried to... To talk Melora out of it. What? Tried to talk Melora out of it. Out of attacking the cat or attacking us? Out, out of attacking us. Yeah. The door beside you kind of uh, moves easily now as, as Melora Tree uh, moves in to attack the cat. Um, as you widen the doors and can see in, you can see that there are large strips of of a bark that have been ripped off this tree. There's more than one a large branch which has been torn asunder. Um, and I'll yell out, Melora, where we the got you. where the branch meets the 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 human humanoid form, you can see there are deep scratches there. I'll tell her that we are here to help, and she saw the big strike of flame that attempted to make contact with the cat. Okay. So she must surely recognize a Phoenix champion, right? Okay. Um, you, can, before, but... <laughs> you can make a, a persuasion type role to try to make I your presence felt. Persuasion. That is a whole plus one. <laughs> Eleven. <laughs> I mean, you're, you're standing there going, you recognize me, right? Like, you know that was me, right? And the tree does not seem to acknowledge you. Of course, it doesn't really seem to have a head at the moment, so it's a little hard to tell. Okay. Meanwhile, Um, the battle between them goes on. Uh, Again, there's a a, a strike as the cat is now dividing its attention between the people at the doorway and this tree. The tree whomps it on the side, um, and it kind of lifts it a little bit, and it hisses, uh, then strikes back. Uh, catching it's, catching the limb before it goes fully away. You know how cats will sometimes will bat at something and they don't catch it, but their claw will just catch the thing, and it kind of becomes yeah. this this tug of war, which you can see is actually cutting into the 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 bark on the branch, um, wounding it. Um, but the cat's claw is also kind of stuck there a little bit. Can I give guidance to Malora? You certainly can. On her next strike against it. What does the guidance look like? You like say I'll anything? Just utter a prayer to Ignis, which I'm assuming still works in this realm. And there's going to be like a slight fiery glow on the tree. Not actual fire, just the fiery glow. Okay. Because actual fire would be bad. Actual fire would be bad. Yes, that's yes. the lesson <laughs> for the day. <laughs> uh, okay. I will give her an additional D4. And I'll give her advantage and try to, like, tell her where to head. From what I saw from the fight in the hallway earlier with the Panthers. Okay. Um, I don't remember how to do advantage, so I'm just going to do the simple roll twice. Oof. 
Okay. First one was terrible. It's about as bad as it can be. Second one, much better. Um, as you kind of, um, as Melora drags, Melora tree drags this branch away, you can see that there's sap that's running just underneath. Very similar to blood in a certain way, but uh, thicker, more congealed, but revealed whenever the bark has, has been torn away. And then it kind of swings, uh, this time uh, almost underhandedly, to catch it underneath the chin, uh, and is a solid hit. Uh, and that once again, it's a solid hit, but the creature doesn't seem to be extraordinarily heavily affected by it. Well, it's going to get sacred flamed again. All right. And hopefully roll lower than 15. <laughs> uh... <coughs> yes, that's lower than 15. Ha. Boom. Seven. It takes seven fire damage. Okay. And that it definitely notices. In fact, uh, it's going to make a strategic re retreat. Um, Annie, was there anything you wanted to do before it got a chance to move? Just to um... know. That's seven radiant damage. Oh, okay. I it see. might have an extra effect against the Shadow Panther. Okay. Thing. So seven uh, radiant. It, it doesn't have any additional effect, but it has full effect. Okay. Uh, no, I'm I'm good. I'm kind of more acting as support right now. Okay. Um, it leaps backwards. It will take the disengage action. And tries to find a place to hide, but unfortunately, it's too big, and the place is kind of uh, rough. So it ends up kind of, kind of circling a little bit, looking. Um, you both have seen an animal cornered, and this is an animal cornered. Right now, it's just looking to get away. Uh, actually, there will be one thing it will try. Is it will try seeing a door here to try to paw at the door. Don't think it's going to be able to do that. Well, actually, no, it can't anyway because it disengaged. So, it basically throws itself against that door, which barely opens. I'll tell Medric to step out of the door frame because that'll give them a way out. Yeah. Okay. Um, Melora, however, is looking for another target which is nearby, which happens to be Medric. That's I I I went out of the way, not into the oh. room. <laughs> Can I go on your on your icon or I, I told you just take a step back. Oh. Backwards. <laughs> like back this this way back or like this you, way you back? You can't <laughs> you can't share a tile with me. Like here. So here? I know you are bloodied. I wouldn't tell you to go stand beside the the Whomping Willow. Okay, so like where I am now, right? Yes. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, and with, and with that, uh, the the tree starts to stalk forward to the plant, or to the 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 uh, panther, but it's very very slow, um, and can't quite move there. It's extraordinarily slow. It's basically a tree. Uh, and in the corner, the the child is looking around at all these things, uh, and with bright wide eyes, looking at Melora. As if it's a wonderful toy. Mm -hmm. uh, but doesn't move otherwise. The panther will... Uh... Yeah, actually, it can disengage. So I'm, it... I'm going to, like, je gesture for, for the panther to leave. Just like... Uh, make an animal handling check to see if you can convince the panther that running th the gauntlet through all of its enemies would be a great idea right now. I mean, it has nowhere else to go. Go. <laughs> <laughs> and then it leaves the room, but then comes back into the room, but then leaves the room again, and then comes back into the room again. Very neutral 10. Very neutral 10? Okay. Um, Basically, I pushed the door op open and kind of... Okay. Uh, it's going to try to make a run for it, so... Uh, through the gauntlet out here. I'm not stopping it. Yep. I'm like flattening myself against the wall. Speed. Yeah. Oh, wow. It's really good at high speed. So it, it easily runs. Zoom. Yeah, uh, Panthers, they go zoom. All the way over to the other side of the hall. Um, it's got the zoomies. 
It's got the zoomies, but right now it's also terrified because it was sleeping a moment ago and then got whomped. And that leaves Melora in the center of the room. Uh, it does try to make a bit of an, of, a, of an attempt to swipe at the cat as it moves by, but the cat is intent on not being swiped uh, and it misses easily. Uh, but then it turns its attention towards the, towards the hallway. Once again, this thing has no head. Where the head would be is the main trunk of this tree. Um, and multiple branches have broken off at this particular point. It looks a little bit rougher, um, but it's sort of it's sort of moving with intent uh, towards the door, but doesn't seem to know what it's moving to. If that makes any sense, it seems somewhat I'll blind. Of, I'll stay out of her reach, and I'll cast produce flame just to like say it's like not to like put on her, but like just so she can like feel the warmth and like. Maybe, like, quote-unquote, see the flame. Okay. Like, Melora, it's me, it's Medric, it's the Phoenix Champion. We're here to help. Make... I'm going to... Yeah, I'm going to try to help Medric in the... This is what I did to get Farendel to snap out of it. Okay. All right. Um, that cancels the disadvantage. Because flames to trees are very scary. Uh... It's not like... It's, it's more like for warmth, not flame. Okay. All right. Um, we'll, we'll make it an advantage then. I'll, I'll, I'll allow you to kind of m use who you are, which is how she knows you. Yeah. Um, to, uh, uh, yeah, make a persuasion roll with advantage. There's a 13 and a 10, so hopefully the 13 is good enough. <laughs> okay. The tree seems to pause, but and that's not making an aggressive action, but it also seems to be not embracing you at the moment. It's on the edge. Okay. You, uh, you, you don't seem to be a threat. We're here to help. We want to get out of this as well. I'll go closer. I'll put out the flame, obviously. And I'll give her a hug. Okay. Laura, it's me. Tree hugger. Go for it. Yeah. <laughs> um, Tree hugging hippie. But it's like she can feel the warmth, hopefully. And know that it's me. Okay. So you, you wrap your arms around this surprisingly robust form. It's not much bigger than Melora was, but it's solid all the way through. The, the wood is extraordinarily uh, dense. And I'll allow you to make another persuasion roll. I will say it's with advantage as well. And your difficulty has been lowered because she's already on the edge. She's, she's not unfavorable to you now. All right. Um, so advantage. Twelve. Fuck's sakes. Okay, well, I guess that's a 12. <laughs> um, you feel the the body shift away from you. It's almost as though there was a moment of, re moment of recognition, but then there was a rejection of that recognition. It's not aggressive to you, but it did not seem to return your affection. Okay. Um, if you had, uh, go, this is awkward. go ahead and make an insight check. Both of you can do that. 27. Whew. Five. So Annie, um, you're not really sure how trees are supposed to act. You're not even sure how Melora is supposed to act because she's not exactly the most understandable of people. So you're a little stymied. Medric, however, you have um, shared time with Melora. She can be standoffish, she can be commanding, she can be demanding. Uh, but this is almost acting embarrassed or confused or just not entirely understanding. And part of you is sort of thinking, how much of the tree's traits has she taken on? If the, the unicorn is magical and protective, and uh, but aggressive when necessary, a tree is slow and it's uh, contemplative maybe. Mm -hmm. So there's a sort of a sense of she's still working it out and it may take her a while to understand what's going on. But at the very least, not aggressive to you anymore. Okay. There's a, a, a sad cry from the corner of the room. Oh, 
She was better before. Now she's just there. I'll go in. And again, it looks it looks like a child, but with larger than normal eyes, graying skin, ragged clothing. I suppose the fun is over now. Are Just you right, supposed okay. to be here? Uh, no, we're not. In fact, I was hoping you could help us leave. Oh, that's wonderful. I'm so glad you're not supposed to be here. Are you supposed to be here? Uh, I guess so. You want get... to not be here? I want everything to be destroyed or corrupted. Maybe made worse. Made worse is good. Also, I want to eat it. Eat what? Anything pure. That way. Uh, you won't find anything pure in this area, trust me. Oh, that's a shame. Well, the, the flame of Ignis is pure. I could help you with that, but then that wouldn't be very pleasant. Mm, it is pure. But not corruptible, so no. I don't like it. I'll pretend you didn't say that, but okay. You prefer that the flame of Ignis was corruptible? Oh, maybe there's hope for you yet. Roll my eyes. <sighs> Children. I thought she would be corruptible. He points over the tree. I thought she would be corruptible. It was almost happening, but you did something and she's not anymore. No, she's so not close. corruptible. She's my friend. I'll look in her direction and hope she heard that. The tree kind of leans in your direction, but you're not really sure how to take that. I'm Dreek. That's all I am now. How do you spell it? D-R-E. D-R-E-E-K. Okay. I actually spell that right. Cool. And you can kind of see as it moves that the, the, the ragged clothing um, is kind of hiding a shape inside that seems almost like a, a, a body that had a lot more weight and then was losing it. You know how that happens with the skin does not necessarily yeah. go back elastic. It's the same sort of thing there. It, it's not ashamed of it. It's just that's the way it is. And you can kind of get the sense that the, the body shape underneath would be almost not recognizably human. It's twisted and torn. The, the, the arms are not straight. The, uh, even the fingers, which it, it has sort of chubby little fingers, um, you realize the fingers are kind of shaped the wrong, wrong shapes and bent at strange angles sometimes when they move. Break that chain, link, whatever. You want to set me free? Oh, that would be so much fun. <sighs> Bring me something pure so that I can corrupt it. Uh, we'll do our best. <laughs> Best. Even better. Don't take Almost. too long, though. Uh, Melora, are you okay staying here? I'll ask in her, in her general direction. Hopefully she can understand. The or do you tree want to come with us? shrugs? Maybe, or maybe it just kind of caught an invisible wind. It's hard to say. You can see that where one of those large branches is broken off, the the the, the wood that's left behind is getting a little bit of slick uh, sap over it now, as though it's starting to heal. I'm going to. Part of coming into this room was to see if there was any magical items. Right, I forgot about that. Okay. So I'm going to take a quick look. If there's any desk or anything, um, I know there was the door over here. Well, this room in the library was mostly just books. And mm -hmm. I think you guys had looked through some of the books before or mm -hmm. when the meeting was on, I think, uh, before. I think Medrick was in this room. I'm not sure both of you were. Mm -hmm. um, let's just see here. Bring up my, my notes. Yeah. The office uh, might, but... Yeah, these you know ones... That. But her room changed into an empty room for, with nothing in it when we transferred over. So his yeah. office may or may not have anything. 
yeah, this room, you see, there are a number of books. They do seem to have been um, uh, molded or water water damaged. Uh, you make out from the titles, there were a few that were uh, sort of educational or historical in nature. Um, books on uh, books on sailing, books on farming, uh, books on uh, account management, the kind of things you might expect to see in, in a in a, a, manier, a managerial sort of space. The I inner, would like to try this door. That door is locked. It seems like a sturdy, sturdy door. Well, luckily, I have very sturdy, sturdy lock picks in my hair. Ah, it's true. I'll go near, and I'll tell Melora, uh, be careful, that creeper in the corner wants to corrupt you. As you pass by, some of the limbs reach out towards you, mm -hmm. but they sort of gently caress you on the shoulder, as opposed to whomping you like a cat of nine tails. That is much appreciated. I'll hold the limb back and, like, apply warmth to it. No, not fire, just warmth. We're doing our best to fix this, Melora. There's not really any response, but what response could there be? Yeah. I will attempt to open this door. I'm going to take a moment and take my time with it. Okay. Oof. Oof, that teetered on a natural time. <laughs> can I give her uh, guidance? Uh, you certainly can. I will do that. We add a d4. Hey. 15. 15. Probably not enough still. Oh, that was the advantage lock picks, though. Because that's what I have right now. Hmm. Yeah, the one's made out of uh, yep. the, the dwarven tools, I believe they were. Or the gnomish oh, tools. Yeah. <laughs> ha! <laughs> well, that uh, changes a lot. That's not the right skill, though. Oh, that's stealth. Oh, shoot. It would be the, it's same, the same level. Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. Oh, sorry. I have expertise in both. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Wow. Okay. It went from it went from you feeling through the lock, and the weirdest thing for you right at the moment is that there is a similarity to the lock that you carry, the one you've trained on, the one that constantly changes. And there is that sort of sense of it constantly changing in here as well. It's a heavy, heavy lock that is it is sort of magical in nature probably uh or magical or sophisticated uh, mechanical you're not sure um the lock that you carry uh was probably gnomish made which are known for the sort of magical mechanical combinations um it is difficult to unlock um but uh with these tools you're able to apply more pressure than uh, with normal thieves tools that would have easily snapped at trying to do this. Um, so applying that pressure allows you to uh, to pull away that uh, that lock and the door opens. The door itself is thick. It's about two inches thick of heavy, heavy wood uh, meant not to be opened too easily. Now, in this room, I'll describe it first as you might have seen it uh, or might imagine to have seen it when you first arrived. Uh, it is uh, obviously a study, a massive big desk in the, in the middle of the room, a very comfortable looking chair, um, row upon row of shelves behind. Uh, there are um, uh, a small set of, uh, or smaller chairs around the room that could be gathered for an audience. Um, there are, oh, where are we here? Um. Uh, all the official elements of the barony, including yeah. records, are probably found here. Uh, you can see seafaring artifacts, um, as well as the the uh, a series of logs that would uh, indicate the previous barons. In fact, they would have kind of the different uh, eras. Um, there is a uh, a large mirror on one side of the room. Um, although it does not reflect the room, if you if you happen to step in, it instead looks out onto uh, emptiness, uh, which seems very strange. It does appear to be a mirror, but it seems to be uh, reflecting not what's seen in the room. Um, across the table, you see a skeleton laid out, um, bleached white bones, long since dead. Um, 
no, not a scrap of clothing or anything, just, just the skeleton itself. Um, yeah. You'll see probably a ship's compass. Uh, that's what this would be on the other side here. Um, hey. Probably taken from the deck of a ship and then mounted here. Um, curiously, it seems to be spinning, as if unable to find or settle upon what north is. And what would have probably been wooden floors replaced by this rough stone. But as you step in, the stone appears to be wet. And there's a distinct smell in the room that takes you a second to realize it smells of brine, of salt water. The books of shelves, as you look through them, um, once more are about the, uh, the arts of, um, of, uh, of ship mastery. There is uh, uh, books on uh, diseases and poisons, which seem a little out of place. Uh, there are books on uh, astrology and books on um, religion, which is, again, kind of out of place. Uh, and you see, again, the log books of the different barons, including the current one sitting there. Uh, as you look around the room, I'll have both of you make a perception check. Perception or investigation. You can choose. Let me know which one you do, though. Uh, Ooh, not 20. Nice. Not 20 for perception. I was on mute because my cat is being... A pest. An adorable pest, but a pest nonetheless. So, what... Why don't, uh, for you, uh, Annie, tell me one of the details of the room which distracts you so much that you end up focusing on that rather than any other detail. The book with the, the log of the barons. Okay. It looks like an unbroken record going back several hundred years. Um... And then there's the most recent one. You pull the most recent one off the shelf, which would be the, the, the log of the current Baron, and just start flipping through it. And you're a little confused because the handwriting changes about 70 pages in. It becomes a lot more, a lot more uh, uh, rugged and rough. And, and uh, eventually it starts to shift to a much more practiced hand after another 70 pages or so. And somewhat emulates the original handwriting, but there's that break in the middle which causes you some confusion. So that's what you notice instead. Uh, Medric, however, as you're looking through kind of like books, 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 what, have, what would be something of interest to Medric in a room like this? What would be something that would catch his eye? Some kind of like Iggyan artifact, maybe? Okay. It's like, what would he be doing here? Um, so as you move about the room and you're looking through, um, one thing that catches your eye is something that's missing. On the wall, there is a wooden plaque with two metal hooks, obviously meant to hold a weapon. A weapon that have to be really big to fit on that, on that uh, wall. We're talking probably a two-handed sword or even a bastard sword, really, really big. The weapon is not there, but you do notice that the wood seems to be strangely scored, or not scored, strangely uh, warped around where wherever, say, the metal of the blade would have touched. Mm -hmm. So a very peculiar weapon probably was sitting there, but is not there right now. And then you're kind of looking around the books, and you see this small, strange little statue. At least you take it to be a statue. It looks like a... Um, let's say it looks like a monkey um, that could clap its hands. And as you kind of move through and you kind of poke at it, it shifts ever so slightly, and you realize it's actually clockwork of some kind. Uh, and it starts to, to clatter and make some noise. As it moves... As it moves you notice that there's a break between the two bookshelves that are there. A gap much larger than would normally be set in a room like this. And you find a little uh, lever on the inside, just behind that 
that uh, uh, mechanical monkey. There's a lever here. And I'll push. Uh, actually, uh, Annie. Mm -hmm. There's a lever here. Okay. Um, I, w I would like to quickly, the thing that would have distracted me was I noticed that. Can I skim if there's anything of note in the first page of each change? Hmm. Um, I'll have you make, what would be an appropriate role for that? I do have, um, I believe, give me two seconds, proficiencies. I mean, history I might do, work, or... I do have proficiency in forgery kit. Sure. Go ahead and, and roll that one. Okay. Uh, da -da. So... What stat do you want me to use for it? Let's say intelligence. Okay. So. I'm going to roll history as the roll because that's going to be the same sure. number. Okay. So as you're flipping through this book and you note this kind of strange difference in the, 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 the writing style, you flip back to find kind of the first couple of entries. Um, the first thing you notice is that the, 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 the entries that are there seem remarkably banal. There's talks about taxes. There's talks about, you know, uh, import export of people coming to the, to the uh, barony, kind of typical work you would expect. In fact, so typical that when you flip back a few pages, you read exactly the same words as if this was created to be an entry, but it's not a real entry. It's just a copy of a previous entry. Uh, and kind of flipping back and forth, you see that many of them are copies of previous entries as though they wanted to make sure that entries were there. If anybody casually looks through the book, things seem to be normal, but you kind of with your practiced eye can, can catch that. The last entry before the change uh, talks about a meeting. Um, a meeting with a representative of the king about a change of the barony. And it gets kind of editorialized. Uh, let's see. It is... Uh, angry that the barony should be transferred to one such as this. Um, whether his service to the king and queen overweigh his prior deeds, I do not believe it. But my illness will not have me last long. And there's a name that's written there, but the name is crossed out, like heavily crossed out with ink as if trying to obliterate it. Looking at the rest of the handwriting, it does not feel as though they were trying to fake the handwriting. But more, it was the hand or the result of someone practicing. So when the new handwriting started, it was crude and primitive and copying. But they were trying to get better. And you can see that progression. And to some degree, it, it reminds you of your, your upbringing. When you're learning your letters and you're learning how to do them properly, it's a lot of rote learning. It's just over and over and over again. Write out this treaty. Write out this, this, uh, this historical document. Write out this, this line from the wisdom books. Write out this history. Over and over and over again. So you get exposed to a lot of these things, but your hand is what's being trained, not your mind. And it feels as though one that of those, was... My handwriting on official documents is one thing. My handwriting in my personal notes is a different thing. Exactly. Someone was trying to get better 
perhaps to fit this new role of being the Baron. And this entry is dated, oh, I don't know if I have the specific date here, but it would be decades ago. To my recollection, how long has this barony been in place? Um... On a vague notion, especially looking at the other logs that are here, the barony has been here for a very long time, um, like generations. Mm -hmm. um, although as you look at the, at the logs, you, you notice that there's sort of a curious problem mm -hmm. that some of the dates seem to fade away as if they are not entirely there. And there's a sense of vertigo because as you look at the books, one time you look, there seems to be 20. Another time you look, there seems to be 50. Another time you look, there seems to be 30. Oh, fun. Um, I'm assuming I would have told everything I noticed about the room to Annie. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yes, you you found crack between two bookshelves. Where is it? I'll point it out. And also the thing with the uh, the mechanical monkey. Is that a clock winder thing? Should we take it with us? And also the uh, where, there, where there should be a big-ass weapon on this plate. Well, considering the Baron had a big-ass sword, I'm going to guess that that's what's supposed to be there. Was it a two-hander, though? It was a pretty massive sword. He wielded okay. it one-handed, but most people would need two. Okay. You mentioned... Um, uh, yeah, so, so that's my, my response to the, the sword. You, you said... Go ahead, Nax. Oh, right. Uh, I was... Because Mark, used, uh, the DM, said that there was, like, a bit of warping where the, around where the edges of the sword used to be. Can I look at that a little closer? Like, is, is, is the plate magical? Is what I'm wondering, basically. Um, the As you look closer, it doesn't appear that the plate itself is magical. Um, it is a little bit roughed up just by being in this environment. It appears as though the magic of the sword over time was was uh, infesting the, 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 the wood or just damaging it. Uh, and you do remember that the, the there was a uh, sort of... Uh, uh, foggy after brush of the sword um it seemed to emit cold and you can imagine that a cold sword sitting there for a long time would do that kind of damage yeah i suppose All right, i'm I, not I'd... great at investigation so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna take one of these lighter looking chairs and i'm gonna throw it at the space between the bookshelves. Well, before you do, one of the other things that uh, the Medric would have mentioned is that he found a lever. Oh, fair. <laughs> in the bookshelf, yeah. just behind where that monkey thing was. Fair. I just um, want to make sure it's not trapped. I mean, you're better at these things than I am. <laughs> uh, I mean, I'm not, but okay. <laughs> I mean, ro um, rogue's got I'm a rogue. It's the thing, right? <laughs> I'm good. I'm good at unlocking things. I'm not good at finding traps. I am the least perceptive person in this group. <laughs> or if you want, I can open it and grab a table and hope that if there is a trap, the table's going to stop it. It's all good. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, take the makeshift club that I have and use it to press the lever. Okay. Like. <laughs> It's a little awkward um, to, to get that club into the space, but eventually you hear this click, click and the wooden shelf moves ever so slightly as if on a hinge. You pull it open. Yep. Beyond it, you see the void 
as if you were looking outside to what you had seen before when the other door was smashed. But, while you see a void here, the thing you have figured out is there's a secret room here. It's not represented in this plane of existence, but it does exist. It also means that only some things were brought into this space. And if it was a hidden room that someone didn't find, they wouldn't have known to bring it. Where, where did that side go? They didn't bring it. Oh, so just like she gently... doesn't know everything. Huh. So I'm going to close believer again hoping that it closes the void one last thing in this room then we'll do something with uh, Silas for the end of the episode as you kind of step back you glance over at that mirror and you see something moving in the mirror small but definitely moving, not a reflection of this room. The empty space beyond, much like the void that you saw out this door. Do you move closer to the mirror? Or do you examine it further? So we're seeing something that's in the void, but that we can't see like if we look directly in the void? You're seeing something through the mirror. Okay. I'll... I'll go closer, slowly, yeah. carefully. With my chair shield held up. Okay. Partially broken chair shield. But... Um, the figure grows in size as if moving closer to the mirror. It's moving in an arc. Flying, if you will, through this empty space. Pretty soon, you recognize the strong, leonine form with a humanoid body on top. Catherine. Indeed. Recognizable, Cathron, moving through the space, but not seeming to move towards you as much as moving at an angle. What if we break this mirror? I Would think that that's a good idea. It's Cathron. MJ. It's Cathron. Make an appearance. Cathron. <laughs> I don't think that's a good plan. What, what if that just alive? traps her there? Or what if it sucks us in? Yeah, I suppose. Catherine. She moves in a curve that takes her away briefly um, and kind of upward. And you see trailing behind her a massing, writhing, gray, black collection of, of tentacles, essentially. Space rippling, otherwise featureless, that seems to be chasing after her. You call out, and the figure, while it was getting smaller and further away, veers back again, almost turning this, this mass in on itself. And you see it heading straight for the mirror, straight for you. No sound, none that you hear anyway from your side. I'll cast Produce Flame. Hold it in front of the mirror and back up slightly because uh, if she comes in, she's going to be crashing through. Okay. Stand at the side. Yeah, the side is good, yeah. <laughs> Flying as she does, it's almost like running and sort of loping through space. Um, you see the tentacle start to overwhelm and then she reels back and a gout of lightning comes out of her hand, temporarily pushing it back. She seems to be screaming something, but there's no sound. Can I read her lips? You can try. It's a perception check, a pretty high one. You're pretty good at those. Ha ha, am I? Yes, yeah, it's only plus five. Thirteen. Thirteen? Yeah, unfortunately, she per turned her face away just uh, to check on the things behind her just as you were starting to get the word. Something um, loud. It definitely seemed like she was yelling. Um, and she charges straight for the mirror and then collides with it. 
heavily. She's larger than the mirror is. If she were standing here, she would be at full size. Her, her claws scrape at the mirror on the other side. Um, and you can see her really close shouting into the mirror. She puts her, her, she puts her forehead to the mirror and casts a spell. And in your mind, you hear, find me. Is it, was that ascending or? It was ascending. Uh, it's not done. Okay. Take heed of your dreams. I will give you what I can. And those tentacles seem to have caught up to her and are starting to ooze over her form, pulling her back from the mirror. While she's in contact with the mirror, what are your 15 words? Just I'm writing down her message. That's five words. Where should we look? We will come for you. And you feel like the magic cuts off at the word we in the last part. Okay. Um, her expression looks puzzled at the word mirror. She clearly does not perceive it like that. Uh, and then she's dragged away before she's able to respond again. The mirror goes dark. And it almost feels as though the mirror itself has been hit, or like it's a window that's been hit by that, that ooze. The mirror mm -hmm. starts to crackle. And large cracks start to form across it. Uh, sh should we leave? Uh, I think we should leave. The mirror explodes outward towards you. Both of you make a dexterity saving throw as glass shards spray through the room. 18. Whew. That's close. Okay. Ah, helps if I open the right thing. <laughs> okay, both of you succeed. You both take two points of piercing damage as the glass shatters throughout the room, leaving behind what looks like kind of like the open doors when you've opened them before. It looks like a square window into the void. But there's nothing on the other side. We should probably go before the, those uh, tentacles start, start coming through. I know I it's know delayed, it... but I'm, I'm going to use evasion. My brain was just looking sure. for it. You take sure. one point. Or was, no, that's whole on, uh, it, complete on, yeah, on it, save. Yeah. yeah. So you take no points as you use Medric as a shield. <laughs> Uh, or hide behind the desk or table that's there. Yeah. All right. Well, you've got some weirdness to think about. We'll return back to uh, the scene with uh, Silas, the Baroness, and Yellow Lace. So, Yellow Lace gestures and the thorns embed themselves in the Baroness's body, turning her and setting her upright so you sh now she can finally face uh, come face to face uh, but she's docile your spell has taken effect both your spells have taken effect producing in her um, a, an, a a sort of almost accepting uh, uh, mode tell me sorcerer or warlock if you're so bound to that other creature. What other tricks do you have to aid me? And what now are you going to ask as a price? Keep in mind, the prices beyond the payment are not to be accepted. What the... Hmm. I can do many things. Most of all, I am adaptable. But what 
I need is a way to get to Mother Hydra and a way to bring her back safely. Mother Hydra. I know many names. I'm not sure if I know they that one. I also know her as Zagwatha. Oh, and her, her her face lights up almost in a in a smile of of not only recognition, it's sort of it's that it's that uh, moment from Jurassic Park. Oh, clever girl. Um mm. of the of the hunter being being uh, uh recognized. Ah, now so much more becomes clear. So Zagwatha wishes to come here. <laughs> I'm glad to see that she still inspires such loyalty in her followers. She is well beyond the far realm, but my sister's gift to me of exile showed me many things beyond most of our kind's knowledge. It can be done. But you will still owe me much more. With this one in my thrall, and she points gestures towards the Baroness, I only need one more. I do not need both my sisters. Slay one, and the other will come willingly to me. Are they here? Where are they? They are partially here. The crow, uh, sorry, the raven and the toad are their avatars. I sense that they are not so cut off as they once were. Clever. The bonds are releasing. So <coughs> will you kill the avatar of one, or will it require me to kill the avatar and then hunt down them. Kill the avatar of one. That one would be your chosen prey. Then find her and destroy her. If that is done, then I will make a gate. There will be some things needed for this gate to be built. Some Devices and arcane magic. I've sensed it returning to the world. They will be hard to get, but your prize is worth everything, is it not? There is something that is worth everything. Good. This may help me with that. Something larger than Zagwatha. You might not want to tell her that. The mother, as you call her, gets very jealous. That is for me to handle. Hmm. <laughs> Indeed. And she, have, gestures of the Baroness, is mine to handle. My magic will give you ten minutes of this. Or until I am injured. I can only hold the spell so long. It will be long enough. Um, he starts to, to move back towards the door, hoping that the thorns will move out of the way. They do, but they kind of brush against his essence. It's sort of a, a reminder of who's in control. Mm-hmm. He carefully does not show any loss of control. Um, how will you contact me once we are uh, once we are through here? I believe my puppet here can get in touch with you quite easily. Gestures towards the Baroness. He looks at the Baroness with just a 
a little bit of pity, but mostly just no. Uh, you're a beast and a monster and not a person. I care not for you. Then I will be off. Do you have a preference which one remains to serve you? No. They both betrayed me together. Then he'll stop before the uh, the barrier and just look back and kind of motion at it. You see it thin before you. Then he will continue through. It resumes after you pass through. Um, yeah, he'll send a message to the rest saying, uh, I think she's going to be distracted for a while. Um, what are we doing at the moment? Oh, and beware the frog and the toad. They're hags. Or the, the raven and the toad. Raven and the toad. Sorry, frog and toad. Yeah. Anyway, uh, yeah. Beware the raven and the toad. They're hags. We've already figured that part out. We're trying to free the toad so that they can get us out of this situation and they'd be indebted to us. Hmm. You're muted, uh, Nex. Oh, am, am I hearing this conversation or no? <laughs> no, you're only hearing the side from, from Silas. Okay. Yeah. Uh, where are you? Library. We saw Catherine. Sort of. What? That shocks him. Where? Through a mirror in some kind of void. Everything outside of this palace is a void. Mm. We yeah. need an object of power. Hmm. Or to donate a soul. <laughs> Sacrifice. I would rather not do that. Same. Likewise. Um, I will keep an eye out. Do I see the toad anywhere as I'm wandering roughly, like generally in their direction? Uh, let's see. Which door did you come out of? The same one you had? He came out, yeah, he came out the bottom one. If he's going towards the library. He'd probably be going this way. Yep. Yeah, you'll Ooh. actually see the toad right there. Oh. I see... Dude, ah, okay, I see around the corner. Huh. Well, I immediately hit the toad with my staff. I charge it up first. Oh, no. <laughs> the toad is our way out. Kills it. Yeah. Yeah, but the toad's also a price, and he can't tell you that. <laughs> uh, so you charge up the staff and strike... Uh, Run, yeah. little buddy. <laughs> uh, he's going to hex the toad first and then charge up and strike. Where's my thingy? It's one of the few times I've actually gotten to use the entire uh, charge up. Is that the... I got a 14 to hit. Okay. There is a reaction when you cast the hex. Uh, it is of surprise. Uh, and uh, and concern. Uh, the hex does land, however. Uh, and uh, was it 14 to hit? Yeah, yep. 14 hits. So that's 12 bludgeoning, 5 necrotic, and 2 thunder. So 19 damage. I think that's the best I've ever done with this. Uh, yeah, and so there's this massive explosion you guys hear from down around the hallway because the thunder damage reverberates quite a lot. Uh, and you strike down on this giant toad and it is crushed with the thunder damage. Oh, uh, it, kind, it kind of uh, uh, splatters a little bit, very liquidy, uh, splatters into the hallway uh, and the, the eyes come rolling backwards 
uh, out of the, the, uh, the, the substance and kind of roll to a stop and regard you and blink. I try to pick them up. I don't know if I can do that. Yeah, you go over. Yeah, so it's it's it easily enough. Carry its soul. We can get like the other thing. Centered. Yeah, the the eye. It's weird when you pick up the eyes. They're both about. Uh, they just barely fit into your hand. It's a giant toad. Um, it, or each fit. Or each one is about the size of your palm. Uh, the most weird part is the fact that they're still turning and moving and trying to look around. Even though they're not connected to any muscle, they turn and move on their own. Uh, but they're kind of looking at you with some surprise. As you might imagine. Um, he's yeah. gonna put him in the bag of holding. Okay. In they go. And just my actually, poor bag. <laughs> gross. And just uh, walk back to here for a second. And say, um, your sister's avatar went splat, but her eyes are left. What do I do with that? Um, she simply looks over her shoulder. She's got her attention focused on the Baroness and has apparently been talking to her, whispering to her. And she looks back at you with a sort of puzzled expression. If you wish to keep prizes, I do not care. So destroying the Avatar was enough. She's not here anymore because these are still looking around. It should have been enough to destroy her connection. Perhaps she's found another way. Okie dokie. They will be powerful <laughs> if you can use them. But she's still powerless, I believe. Okay. Uh, then he'll uh, quickly just get the heck... Oh, hey, there's a raven here. So, um... Make a perception check. Yeah. Uh, why am I most nuts? Why is that upside down? Did I do that? Why is what upside down? I think, oh, I, the raven? I, think I accidentally yeah. spun, spun the raven around somewhere. Oh, possibly. Which feels really f funny, but also not intentional. Uh, uh, I got a 12. Okay. Um, as you backed out of that hallway, you realized there was a fluttering down the hall. And as you move around, and I will try to fix the orientation of the raven because it's just weird that it's upside down but uh it it uh you realize the fluttering was from the raven's wings uh it was in the hallway down the hallway while you were uh, attacking the toad uh, and it does not let you get close oh yeah no he's not he doesn't try to get close uh he does say and oh, which one are you Um, yeah, it's just flying away out of concern. It's not even going to answer you. Walk out. Ah, hey, it's, uh, wait. Um, you, by the way, are covered in frog goo. Uh, but we still can't see him. Yep. But you can't, you can't be seen, yeah. Yep. He's got to be pressed to digitating that off of him. Uh, he'll be he'll be invisible, but leaving a trail of frog goo in the uh, the uh, not astral realm, ethereal realm, wherever he's stuck. Um, okay, so we oh, there's Verendel and Melora. Okay, I see. Uh, it's a uh, he comes in, pulls out his book again, says, uh, "I'm here." We're doing what? What did you need for the the thing? An object of power to free the raven's sister. And as oh. you come into that space... She's uh, been freed. You see... You also see that childlike strange creature in the corner who's does apparently watch you come in and you can see this look of of vicious glee crossing across its face as soon as as uh as silas uh pardon me if i'm breaking up a bit i'm getting some warnings about system resources um you see this childlike glee 
uh, uh, light up its face when it sees Silas come into the room. Oh, good, good, it's begun. She did promise this would work. But now I have to bring the tasty things to me. And it reaches out a hand and seems to pull into nowhere, grasping on uh, a shadowy rope that was not there before and pulled in through the wall and up next to the creature is a tall, uh, masculine, horned shadow. The figure you had seen before as the diamond. The one that had confronted the Baron and had recently been seen and, and in a sort of uh, unmovable state, trying to confront the Baron but unable to move. Now seems tethered and perhaps under the control of this small creature. This one, this one is going to be so good for me. The corruption, the drive from loyalty, it will taste so good, all in service of my mistress. And that's where we're going to end tonight. Uh, with this little creature claiming that it has now the diamond as its snack. Uh, should we let him or should we do something? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Uh, the diamond, you, such a pure soul. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, you guys hear, hear this in your heads, but uh, Silas just writes in the book, WTF? Question <laughs> mark. <laughs> Indeed, there's a lot of that going on. Well, uh, we'll bring tonight's session to a close. And uh, thank you guys for being so patient. It took quite a while to get us back to playing again. Uh, thankfully, the heat did not hinder me. I'm not melting yet. Uh, and you guys moved the, moved the mystery a little bit further forward uh, and made some choices uh, that will probably, I mean, they'll, they'll either haunt you forever or they'll be perfectly fine. Uh, that will be something you guys get to determine on your own. Uh, we'll play in a couple more weeks. If you want to find all the previous episodes, if you're watching this at home, you can go to youtube.com slash ENCAF1. Look for the uh, the Legends of the Drowned Isles playlist or the Great Confusion to find this specific one. This is episode 50, 57. So we've had 57 sessions of this. I think the last 50 sessions have been at this party, but it's all right. It's been a fun party. It's coming to a conclusion very shortly, though. Um, one, one image you might keep in mind as all this is happening is just imagine that you're in an office building that's being dropped from orbit. That should keep you comfortable for the next couple of weeks. Uh, you can also find, uh, watchers of the drowned Isles on uh, Facebook as well to chat or find the summaries of previous episodes. Thanks very much to my players, um, for putting up with my weirdness <laughs> and whatever the heck Thanks this for is. Running and making the weirdness. And we will, uh, we'll have fun again in two more weeks. So. We just make it more weird. It's fine. Yeah, you made it weird. That's okay. 